Every AE wants to know what it takes to be number one, top of the leaderboard. And so I have a real treat for you today. Today I'm going one-on-one -on -one with Tanvir Mustafa, who is an AE over at Salesforce. He was the number one BDR. He is the number one AE in his segment. He even has his own podcast where he teaches other reps how to become their version of number one. I'm really excited to talk to him today. So without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome, Tanvir, great to be with you here. Thanks so much, David. I'm, I'm really excited and uh, it's great to be here. Oh no, look, this is awesome, man. And you know, I, the, I wanna kind of start off, I always talk about like the origin story. I'm not getting into like, you know, X-Men, Wolverine or anything here, but I'm just, you know, this idea that we all get into sales by accident and, and, and I'm no exception, you're no exception. We all have this kind of backstory, this origin story that was the catalyst for us where we said, yeah, you know what, this could be a job, this could be a career. So I'm curious and I'm sure everyone out there listening is curious to hear like, what is the, the Tanvir origin story? Yeah, it takes me back to when I was 11 years old and I wanted this red bike with green stripes, only to be told that, you know, does money grow on trees? And then, uh, you know, I was told I need to procure that money myself. So I um, asked my parents one day if I could go out snow shoveling door to door uh, to make that money. And they said no. I was I was really young at the time. Obviously, I was a kid and they didn't feel um, safe about me doing it. Regardless, one day as I'm shoveling our own driveway at the end, I'm like, what how much is it going to hurt if i just go like two houses down and ask somebody so i go you know first person says no second person says no third person says yes fifth person says yes and then i walk home i think with 60 dollars in hand show it to my mom and it was it was done from there they were pretty convinced that this was something that uh that i could continue to do safely um from there you know that's where my passion for sales began i ended up uh working in retail sales at nordstrom down the road um, worked at TD Bank as a sales rep for, for a long time and made my way eventually to Salesforce where I was a top performing SDR, BDR, um, and now AE in the role. I work with, at this time, growth businesses in the healthcare and life sciences space, primarily in the U.S., and uh, and I'm having a great time. I love it. Well, it's funny. The, the story you tell about going to your parents and asking for the bike, I have a term for that. I call it, the you know, I talk about it, I call it the puppy conversation. Where it's like you go to your parents, you say, mom, dad, I want a puppy. And you just get bombarded with questions. It's like, do you know what it means to take care of a puppy? And like the bike, like, do you know how much it costs? And who's going to take care of it? And all that kind of stuff. And if you don't have good answers to those questions, you ain't getting a puppy. And I, I talk about it, that in the context of, we know when we're in sales, we work with our champions, we get them all excited. And they're like, yeah, like we're going to totally do this. And then they have to have a puppy conversation with people in their own organizations about your product and service. And if they don't get the right answers to the questions that they're bombarded with and you know we we lose faith so i i love that so i'm curious so you started as a young age you know you kind of go door to door and you're like oh like people are willing to pay me to do stuff not everyone but you know like there's a certain percentage that will i'm curious you know one of the things i often think about is is the reps are successful because they have some kind of superpower you know like we, we often think about oh yeah we want reps that are like hardworking and driven and relationship builders and stone cold killers and awesome like whatever it is and the reality is, I believe that sales reps can be very effective and reach number one for all different reasons, right? All different reasons. So I'm curious, and this is actually an interview question I would ask reps, but I'm, I'm going to ask you this question of like, what's your superpower? Like, what's the thing that if I were to talk to your boss and say like, what's Tanvir all about? Or why is he so successful? The one thing that I would hear about you, that's like, a, a, of course, this, this is why you've been able to achieve what you have. To me, it's the mindset. Um, to me, everything else, all the tactics, all the habits, all the routines, all the little, you know, the spe that specific prospecting email that you might send out with the right perfect words um, is all for naught if you don't have the right mindset in place. And I've spent years and years developing that uh, ever since I was young. And I think part of that mindset has always been uh, my North Star or my North Statement, which for me is, can I be as good as I think I can be? So when I was a kid and I'm snow shoveling driveways, after a while, you know, that imposter syndrome creeps in, which is, are people just giving me money because I'm a cute 11 year old? I'm not that cute anymore, but you know, at the time, are <laughs> Don't they- Don't sell yourself they... <laughs> short, man. Uh, you know, you're very handsome. All right, cool, cool. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Are, t are people just taking pity on me? Like, so, you know, that sort of lingered for a long time. And then I, I went to Nordstrom and um, it was clothing sales. So it was like, all right, I'm a part-time worker. I'm, I'm leading the, the, the full-time team. Okay, I can do this in, in clothing retail. Can I do this in another industry? So went to banking, 
all right, well, tech sales is like the, the top of the top, the, you know, SaaS sales, is the cream of the crop. Can I do it in SaaS? So it's always been, can I continue to prove that, that I can be as good as, good as I think I can be? And I think keeping that as my North Star throughout has always uh, helped me and has served me pretty well. I love it. Look, you know, we're all intrinsically motivated to be good at what it is that we do. And I love this idea of like, we push forward, not because, not because I'm trying to be at the top of the leaderboard, but because I'm just trying to be the best. And I love, you know, so people who have read Dan Pink's book, Drive, uh, you know, the surprising truth behind what motivates us, autonomy, mastery, purpose. It's the same reason why Tenvir, you know, continues to kind of push the ball forward. But I'm curious, because I know a lot of sales reps and, and pe me, people like we struggle with this idea of, identity and i've seen this happen with so many reps which is like you tether your mindset to your quota attainment and you're like if i'm top of the leaderboard and i'm going to hawaii and all these great things i feel pretty good about myself and if i'm having a slump then i kind of feel like shit um, and 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 it, it's unfortunate because as salespeople, we take we, we have such a transparent success metric and we live and die by it every single month and it's on the dashboard so how do you, and maybe you do, maybe, how do you disassociate your ego with your attainment? Because if you're slumping, you can't bring that mindset to your life and to your customers. How, what, how do you navigate that? Yeah, David, I had a hard time with that for, for a really long time. And um, to, to paint a bit, bit of a picture and tell a story, I mean, as a sales rep, it's very easy to get lost in your work. We often feel like there's so much to do and so little time. And that's what I did for the longest time. It was, you know, hitting the phones nonstop, emailing nonstop, um, going back to back on meetings and saying yes to any and every opportunity that came my way, whether that was a, a client that was trying to give me a runaround or outside of work even. And that landed me in the ER as an SDR. That gave me a panic attack as a BDR and a crippling anxiety as an AE. Whereas, you know, last year was one of the, the best years of my career numbers wise, but I wasn't necessarily the most feeling fulfilled all the time. And, you know, I remember there used to be days where I'd get to the to the end of the day, I'd close my laptop and I'd feel like I just ran a marathon. It was it was nuts. You know, my body was feeling completely my body and brain were feeling completely zapped. And what I learned after sitting that pain for a long time and lots of trial and error is that one. Yesterday is a mystery. Or sorry, yesterday's history. Tomorrow's a mystery and today is a gift. If I continue to think about that quota over my head at the end of this year, at the end of the year, this large, big number, I'm really going to have a hard time getting there. But if I focus on what I'm doing today, if I focus on the systems that I built today, we don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level of our systems. So if I can focus on the systems that I execute on a day-to-day -day basis and I fall in love with that process, that is what will help me succeed in the long run. If I don't hit my quota after giving my all on those daily systems, so be it. But over time, what I've been able to do is, you know, hone in on that system. And I think that's what has helped me with being successful is, all right, instead of 20, 40, 60 unrelevant and unpersonalized outreaches, let me do five quality focused outreaches in the morning. Let me put breaks in between my prospecting <laughs> let me eat lunch let me meditate in the morning let me um you know slow down in order to speed up and baking those into your day i think is super important because that creates a sustainable system it's better for me to do two hours of focus work every day as opposed to four hours of fo focus work twice a week mm -hmm. i'm getting more hours in and it's quality and it's consistent. So now I know that I'm going to continue to have the system that that continues to work and and um, prosper over time. I love it. I love the focus on systems. I'll tell you one of the things that you know, it, as a salesperson, you almost have goals thrust upon you. It's like Tanvi, here's the goal. We all know what the it's the quota. Here's the goal. But as an entrepreneur, one of the things I always struggle with is is goal setting. And in fact, you know, one of the I had this conversation with my wife the other week. I'm like, I don't think I have goals like I, I never set out to say I'm gonna make this much money or I'm gonna impact this many people and it's not that those things are bad but in a way like I found sometimes not having those goals has been very effective because then you're almost not limited I remember you know talking back in the day like let's say for example I, I said uh, you're gonna run a marathon like how do people run marathons and and at the end of the marathon they just collapse they're like I'm I'm spent 
But if you move like the finish line 10 feet further, like they would, they would cross the finish line and then, you know, so it's the difference between saying, you know, 10 feet or give me a hundred pushups or just do as many as you can. Unencumbered by the goal, you might actually end up doing better. Now, my wife kind of called bullshit on me a little bit on this. She's like, what are you talking about? You have goals. You said you were going to write a book. You said you were going to do this. So, so you do have the kind of like these macro goals, but sometimes I, I totally agree with you that the system is more important. The consistency is important. And sometimes we become a little bit encumbered by the structures that we 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 put on ourselves and, and in fact it's funny so one of the i love this also your narrative around working smart because it's actually a question that i would get when i was back at salesforce and other places where you have like you know tons of reps hundreds of reps and the question of like you know ten beer comes to me and says you know hey david i know you want me to make 50 calls a day 100 calls a day but i'm not going to do that i'm going to focus on a smaller number uh you know of higher quality outreaches and that's how i'm going to make my number and what's interesting is like i I believe that working smart is good, but I often, and I'm curious to get your thoughts because I mean, this is, you know, from your world of, of winning streaks, I often find that sometimes people think that they're working smart too early in their career and they're actually not ready to do that. In fact, I saw hundreds of reps and a strong correlation that more calls, more email, more outreach equals higher attainment. That's just what the data says, right? So if you're talking to a rep or when you think about your career, like, how do you think about this balance of working smart, working hard? Because a lot of reps are out there thinking to themselves, I'm just going to work smart. When in reality, they're pr probably still not trying hard enough to, to yeah. be able to work smart. What do you think? I, I, I don't understand why we need to disassociate the two. To me, you know, working hard and working smart can be synonymous with each other. You know, if I'm doing two hours of focused work per day, then, or like an hour, even an hour of focused work as an AE, but I do it every day, that's working hard, mm -hmm. you know, and that's working smart. Um, I think part of it is approaching each and every day with a, a beginner's mindset. You know, that's what keeps things interesting. Um, I, I'm not a relationship expert, but I, when I think about my love for the game and my love for sales, you know, last year as, as I was starting to feel a lot of the burnout and the anxiety and I started falling out of love with the game, but here's perhaps some good sales and relationship advice is, Stay, falling in love is just the beginning. It's the work that you do every single day to stay in love that continues to allow the, that, that relationship to, to blossom and to prosper. And so by doing those actions every day, you're not only working hard on your love of the game, but you're also approaching it with a new mindset every day. All right, what's something different that I can do tomorrow that I haven't done today? What's a, a different angle that I can look at this opportunity with? Um, and you know, coming coming together with with different approaches approaches. So, I mean, when it comes to to working smart and, and working hard, I don't think there's a there's a distinction between the two. I think you can do both. Um, but briefly commenting on your sort of goals um, statement of, of these you know the goals at the end of the year and so on and so forth. It's good to have those goals, but what a win actually looks like is reverse engineering those goals to have something daily to work towards. What what can I do today so that by the end of today, I know that I had a winning day? And you won't have that every single day. That's just, it's very hard to have that every single day. But mm -hmm. most days, if you can have that happen on most days, then you're living, you know, a pretty good, fulfilling um, and goal oriented system. I love it. You know, people know I'm a big fan and a freak around this book called The One Thing, The Surprisingly Simple Truth Behind Extraordinary Results. And then that's the idea is this focusing question of Tanvir saying, so what's one thing I could do today or this week or whatever time horizon you're looking at uh, such that I could achieve my goals and everything else I could potentially do would just be easier or unnecessary. Like what's that, that one thing? And I love that focus on the one thing. I think the, one of the big challenges we have now is just, you know, focus in general, blocking out the noise. And there's probably lots of tips and tricks that you have for that. But I, you know, maybe we'll, we'll do like a round two sometime. But I love this idea of like the beginner's mind because I'll tell you when I was back at Salesforce, one of the things I noticed because I ran a report on this is that my newer sales reps were actually giving away fewer discounts than the experienced reps were because the experienced reps were almost encumbered by knowledge. They're like, okay, I typically I know that customers like this get a discount like that. And so I'm just going to go into my sales cycle and kind of just go right to that level. Whereas the new reps were approaching it with a beginner's mind and thinking to themselves, oh, like, 5%, all right, like I'm just gonna act as if that's the deal of the week and you know I'm gonna impart that on my customers because 
you might be encumbered by your own knowledge. You might be encumbered by sitting next to another rep who had to give away a 25% discount to get the deal in. And you're like, all right, well, maybe that's just what I have to do. But to the extent you can put on that beginner's mind and, and can approach it every day new, you'll, you'll be like the data, the science says that you will be much better off. So I, I love that. And look, I think kind of what you're, and not to paraphrase what you're saying, Tanvir, is that like sales, sales is a tough gig. We all, yes. if you're, if you're, yes. <laughs> if you're listening to this, you know, sales is a tough gig. And so it's all about trying to figure out, okay, how do we, how do we play that mental game? How do we make it just a little bit easier? How do we survive, get through it? Uh, especially with so many reps in, in, you know, I don't want to say high pressure sales environments, but sales is a high pressure gig in general. And when you're working for like a tier one company like Salesforce, I'm sure it's, even more so, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, it's like I said earlier, it's so easy to go a thousand miles a minute, right? It's so easy to get lost in your work in sales and it's it's not an easy job. But I think a couple of things that help with that is, is again, like understanding yourself. And it took me a long time to do that. It's like the self-awareness is so important in knowing what, what even gets you out of bed in the morning, like what makes you tick. And it's different for everybody. Um, for me, it was, again, that, that, sort of North Star statement of how can I be as good as I think I can be? But practically, what does that look like? Practically, that looks like challenge. Um, I remember at TD, I had this one day where, you know, it was a slow day, didn't have much going on. And I was like, I need so I need something to get me going. So in the last um, half an hour of the day, I was like, look, if I can sell this much in the next five minutes or in the next half an hour before we close, can you toss me like 2000 uh, points, which was like this point system we had for rewards and stuff. You know, lo and behold, within the next half an hour, I've got, you know, six, um, six additional products sold. So I, I personally look for a challenge in my day. And so last year, when I was starting to feel that lack of fulfillment, how I turned things around was like, all right, what do I need to introduce in my day? Or what do I need to introduce um, throughout my sales cycles to, to increase that amount of challenge? What kind of accountability do I need for my manager? Or what do I need to ask of my leadership to feel that challenge? Mm -hmm. um, and strive for it. And, you know, for some people, it might be money. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I think as long as you understand what gets you out in the a bed in the morning, it makes this sales job not easy, but easier. Um, and, uh, you know, allows you to, to sort of execute every day on those systems and, and uh, produce results in the long run, long run. 100%. Look, sales is the means to everything that you want <laughs> in life, right? You know, financial fulfillment, personal fulfillment, you know, um, emotional, spiritual, being able to really connect with people and really help them and kind of discover those pathways and mechanisms. That's what we talk about a lot in my practice in this channel, the pathways and mechanisms by which human beings make purchasing decisions, the things that we do and say, it, a lot of these things are not transparent to us. And in sales, you get to kind of pick these things apart. I'll ask, I have a couple more questions, but I, I'm, I'm curious, and this is, I want you to put on your sales leadership hat here for a second because there's a lot of so I'll, I'll put your bdr sales leadership hat sdr sales leadership hat uh i know you you Ray, came to the top of the leaderboard number one bdr and and i'm just gonna go out there and say maybe there was a point where tanvir came to his boss and said hey you know what i think i'm ready i'm <laughs> i'm ready to be promoted and for all of like the the bdr sdr managers out there i can hear them kind of you know smiling and cringing where a lot of the young enthusiastic reps who've you know, who've nailed it now I'm top of the leaderboard I'm now ready for the promotion, and it's and it's been six months in and maybe you're ready maybe you're not but in general, you think you're ready but you're actually not and so the question I have for you is uh, if you were a BDR manager kind of like what would be like that that pep talk you would give to uh, you know the young up and coming number one BDR who says yeah I, I'm ready to be promoted but and you know kind of with the lens of you're the manager, but also you're Tanvir, the person who kind of came up through the system and you're you're much wiser than you were back in, you know, in the day when you're saying, oh yeah, promote me, promote me. What advice do you have in kind of bridging this kind of gap? Because it's a big challenge a lot of leaders have. Yeah, and this is something that I've done with my managers who have you know led me is that tell me at the, at the beginning of the year, tell me at the start, what do I need to accomplish? What do I need to execute on so that when I approach you with that ask, you know that the that the tick boxes have been checked off. All right, well, this is how many you know meetings you have to produce. This is how much ACV you have to produce. Uh, these, these are the results that you need. This is how you have to be a team player, so on and so forth. And in each one-on-one, -on -one, tracking that, all right, well, 
here is where I'm at. Here's my progress. Are we on track? Are we behind? Are we ahead? You know, and coaching and providing feedback based on that. So I think, first of all, it's like objections, you know, instead of handling objections, you can just prevent them. So uh, same, same thing goes with, I think, um, sales coaching and sales leadership is having a mutual plan in place. I mean, we talk about that all the time at Salesforce, but having a mutual plan in place um, with your reps to know, so they know transparently exactly what needs to get done um, by the time that they're ready for promotion. Now, with that being said, um, when I realized that I, it was time to, I, I thought I was ready to get promoted, I was wrong, you know? And although I did end up getting promoted, it was like I settled and I, my, the biggest mistake was thinking that I had mastered the game. You never master the game ever. So as a BDR, if you're like, you know what, I've I'm I'm pretty much good at this. I'm I'm settled. I know I know my stuff. You probably don't. So you you have to ask yourself, what did I fail at this week? What is something I knew I tried this week? And continue to again stay in love with the game by trying new things. And ultimately, that makes you a much better AE at the end of the day. Hundred percent. I love it. And you know, there's a lot of wisdom in that. You know, we talk about. Uh, in my practice, this concept of inoculation, which is a, an objection handling tactic where you basically raise the objection before it comes up. So I, I love that idea, setting that clear expectation up front. Hey, look, Tenvir, in six months, you're going to be crushing it and you're going to come to me and you're going to say, hey, I'm ready to be promoted. And here's here's why we're not going to promote you at six months. And here's what you need to do, because because you're right. In many cases, there's a lot of like tactical, OK, you hit this metric, you hit that metric, you're making this number of calls, you hit your quota. But then there's also a certain amount of like maturity and experience. It's like a, a doctor that graduates medical school will be different than that same doctor 20 years later after they've seen a whole bunch of stuff and, and in a much better position. And in fact, you know, we used to, uh, you know, kind of handpick leaders on the team that we would purposely hold back from promotion to say, hey, look, Tanvir, I want you to duke it out a little bit longer in the BDR ranks because I actually see you as a potential, you know, as a leader down the road and I want you to get a little bit, a little bit more of that experience and, um, and and that worked out really well. So I'm curious, what, so one last question I always like to leave off on is like, what's your, well back to like the one thing, if you were to give, you know, the kind of the, the 10 veer from X number of years ago or all of kind of the young BDRs, AEs that are kind of starting out, one piece of advice to be successful in their careers, they say, hey, I wanna be like this guy, number one at the top of the leaderboard. What's your number one piece of advice? Yeah, David, I still struggle with this to this day, um, but it is something I work on daily, which is slow down to speed up. I'm in love as you're in love with the one thing. I'm in love with the eighty twenty rule. So, what is the twenty percent of things I can do that will get the eighty percent of results I need at the end of the year? What is that? What are the twenty percent of things that other reps won't do? that will give me the 80% competitive advantage I need to succeed. And you can continue and continue to ask, ask that question over and over and over again uh, until you really dial down to you know, a great prospecting strategy, a great follow-up strategy, a great discovery strategy. Um, and it, go, it, it forces you to go out and learn those things. Go out and learn what are the, the best of the best doing. How are they navigating their day? How are they navigating their meetings? So on and so forth. So I think the more you think about that edge, that 20%, the more likely you are to succeed. I love it. Look, sales is a thinking person's profession. I know Dan Pink says that I say this all the time. You got to be focusing. You got to be looking at what you're doing and to the extent you can improve it. And, and in a world of endless distractions, there's all sorts of things that we could be doing. Focusing on that 80-20. Uh, I love it. And also like asking yourself that question, not just, you know, every year, but like every every day, like every week, every month, like depending on where you're at. And I think that's also just even a great Thing that you could be doing in your personal life you want to get in the best shape of your life you want to have great relationships what's the what's the one thing i should focus on it's going to give me the biggest return so i love it well look man tenvir this has been awesome i hope that everyone out there has enjoyed our conversation maybe we'll have to you know maybe i'll have to be a guest on your podcast we can continue the conversation or we'll, we'll have you back but it was so great to have you here really appreciate you making the time for us on sales lab live Thanks for having me on. And you know, I'd love to have you on my show. So looking forward to that as well. <laughs> Thanks so much, David. All good. All right, everyone. We're going to wrap it up here today. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed the conversation with Tanvir and we'll see you next time on our next episode. Take care, everyone. Ciao.